Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be making Feather Damascus. This knife is the product of this video, so if you want to see how it's made, hang around and we'll get to it. This is going to be a two-part series, and hopefully this will answer all your questions about how to make Feather Damascus. All right, so to start off, we're gonna start with 1084 and 15 and 20 steels. Uh, these are both inch and a half wide. The 15 and 20 is 1 16th thick and the 1084 is 3 16th. Now I'll start off um, all my Damascus builds on the angle grinder, um, cleaning up the mill scale off of both uh, pieces of bar stock. They're both gonna be uh, four foot long um, this will make the process go a lot faster. I know you can chop them up and clean them up on your uh, belt grinder, but to me, this is a lot faster. So uh, I do this on the ground rather than put them in a vise. Um, I'm used to always cleaning up steel on a rubber mat, but uh, we'll do this, get all the mill scale off of it, and then uh, continue cleaning it up. You see we've got them nice and shined up now, so we're going to go over to the chop saw and... Uh, set all these where they're the same length uh, on the stop that I've got built onto the end of my, my chop saw here. And we'll get them cut up and cleaned up a little more and then tack together. You can see here, this is what we're gonna get cleaned up is these little burrs on the ends of each one of these pieces. So we're gonna go over the belt grinder, knock these off and uh, give them a quick pass over the belt and get them tacked together. So the way we're gonna stack these up is we are going to just alternate. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the thicker piece of 1084 on bottom. And that's also what we're gonna finish with on top. Um, if you've made Damascus before, you know having those thin pieces um, on top or on bottom, they'll buckle quite a bit, um, which I really don't like. I don't know that it hurts anything, um, but if you're just tacking it together like I am instead of seal welding the whole thing, then it helps to have a thicker piece on top and a thicker piece on bottom. Um, so that's, that's the way I do it um, if you got something that works better for you. But we are just alternating. Um, with the high carbon and then the high carbon with the nickel, um, every other piece. The other thing that I'm making sure to do is, is keep everything square and lined up on the ends and the sides. Uh, you don't want anything hanging out over the edges. It's just going to be wasted material. Um, and we've got 17 layers here. So if you're into layer count, um, that's where we're starting out, 17 layers. I'm gonna MIG weld the ends. This is a 035 hard wire, and I'm just doing the ends. Uh, so two welds on each end, they're gonna get cut off um, by the time we're done. So uh, you don't have to worry about grinding them smooth or anything like that. The ends are gonna get cut off. So um, I don't do any tack welds through the middle. Uh, that's part of that strategy of having that thicker piece on top and bottom really keeps it from separating much at all and uh, I've had real good luck doing it like this, so I just keep doing it like it. I know I'm spending a lot of time kind of on the setup of the billet here, um, but uh, one more thing to mention is that um, I always put my billet in kerosene. That's uh, also where the, the length I get. I think it's like five and three quarters, five and seven eighths. It works out really good for cutting up a piece of uh, a four foot bar stock. Um, but I always soak it in kerosene. A lot of times I'll set my billet up the night before, and I think that's what I did right here too, is uh, go ahead and get my billet, and then you can put it in kerosene, leave it overnight, and then in the morning you can turn your forge on and uh, take your billet out, weld your handle on, and get started. So as far as the handle goes, um, I picked this little trick up a few years ago, and it made a huge difference for me. 
um, is welding uh, two pieces of round bar together instead of just having one piece um, that turns in your hand all the time if you stack two of them together just like your knife handle um, when it's got a little bit of height on it and it's not completely round it won't spin um, so it gives you a little more control doing it this way and uh, I really I really like it. it also helps you kind of counterbalance the weight of your billet so as far as welding your billet goes uh, you want to make sure that you got plenty of weld on there so give yourself a little bit of gap get some penetration and stack a nice weld up on there. The worst thing that could happen is for you to be forging and uh, eventually that weld will get thinner and scale's falling off, it's getting heated up. You're gonna probably uh, reduce the size of the weld. So put plenty on there, you don't want it falling off. Now that I've got the billet in the forge, um, after you get it up to, uh, you know, not quite weld and heat, I go ahead and uh, add some flux to my billet. I know there's people who aren't into that, uh, but I've had good luck with it, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Uh, I mean, it's not like it's that big of a pain anyway. So I'm gonna do one side, I'm gonna let that flux melt a little bit, get down in the billet, and then I'm gonna flip it over and put some on the other side also, making sure that it's running through. The first thing we're gonna do is set the welds, and I always do that on the anvil with the six pound sledge. Uh, working my way through the middle of the billet first and then around the edges uh, The main thing even if you're going to do this on a power hammer or a press is to do it quickly and uh, Get it back in the forge so that you don't lose a lot of heat A few squeezes down on the hydraulic press or a few hits on the power hammer and then get it back in there quick So after I get this done, uh, I'm gonna be putting this back in the forge and then uh, I'll bring it back out one more time to clean off and get all that flux off of there. And then it's gonna be over to the power hammer and the press for the rest of the time. I like starting on the power hammer just because it's a little bit lighter duty as far as uh, the impact that it's putting on the billet. Um, the press takes so much heat out of it. So when I haven't got my welds set completely, more than likely yet, um, I like to start with something that's not going to take the heat out of the billet. So that's why I start with the power hammer. Even as I head over the press, I'm taking it pretty easy the first pass. Just because the billet's fresh, it's new, there's, you know, like 16 welds in there. So I take it real easy. Um, but as I move on, I'll get more aggressive as I go. All I'm doing right now is I'm drawing the billet out to the point where the billet becomes square. So it's real, it's real easy to get caught up just staring at the billet, but you got to stay focused and realize that what we're trying to accomplish right now is just getting that thing the same height as it is wide. So you can see right here, I'm getting real close to that. So it's time to move on to making W's. So what you can see that I'm doing right here is that I'm pressing this thing at a 45 degree angle of what we have been doing. Uh, and what that's doing is it's rolling that top layer over the edge. Um, and then we're gonna turn it 90 degrees from that and we're gonna do the other corner also. And so for all four corners, um, we're gonna be rolling the top and the bottom layers over the edges. This will make more sense here in a second. I'll show you a little drawing um, of, of, of how this works. Okay, you can see what we've got here is our billet as we started off and then we've turned it 45 degrees and we've crushed the top and bottom corners. And then we also turned it 90 degrees from that and we've crushed the other two corners to where we've got that top and bottom layer that are starting to roll over the sides. And now we're gonna press this thing uh, from what we would normally call the sides of the billet. From now on, we're gonna be pressing and drawing it out this way and that's gonna further roll those sides around. And as we restack it, that's what's gonna create the W's. So as you can see, as we finish forging those corners, now we flipped it up on its side and we're gonna draw it out from here. And this is gonna be the way that, that we restack it and we draw it out from here on out. It's kind of hard to see right here, but having those handles uh, stacked up on top of each other as we started off, we know now um, because things are a little mushy and a little ugly, 
that uh, our handles are going to be side by side as we draw this thing out. At this point, I really don't have any kind of length or height or width in mind. I'm just drawing the billet out as long as I can for my forge, which usually ends up to be about 16 inches. Um, and usually uh, on a billet this size, it's going to end up somewhere in the 5 eighths of an inch range, uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little more. Um, but that, that's long enough to, for me to, to cut it up uh, into three equal pieces and restack it. Another thing to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that the edges are square. And I'm not showing that here, um, but those edges are the most important part. And so you want to make sure that you re-square the sides of it, um, not just the top and the bottom. That way you got as crisp of, of corners on this rectangular billet as you can. Um, that way you're saving as much material as possible. You can see as we've got our billet cooling down here, those horizontal lines in there. So we know we've, we've forged this thing out the right way and we'll cut this thing up here in a little bit and reveal the pattern on the end. So you can see we ended up basically with what I showed you in that picture earlier with those, uh, those two sides, which were the, the top and bottom and how they've rolled around. And once we stack this on top of each other several times, uh, it's gonna form those W's. We're going to stop it here for today, y'all. I sure appreciate y'all watching. Uh, be watching for part two. Um, I'd really appreciate if y'all would subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. All you do, got to do is click that red button um, and watch my other videos. Um, I'd really like to see the, the viewers increase on this channel, and I appreciate all y'all who are watching. So we'll see you next time, and we'll finish up building Feather Damascus.